Here you can see a punch biopsy, and it appears that the inflammation is a little bit uh, restricted to the upper dermis. So moving in on higher power, you will see a perivascular um, lymphocytic infiltrate, but you also notice these areas where the lumen appears to be smudgy and pink. We call that um, fibrinoid necrosis, and you can have an evolution to the perivascular inflammation. Um, you'll notice a lot of associated leukocytoclasis here with extravasated red blood cells. So neutrophils with fragmented nuclei or leukocytoclasis, fibrinoid necrosis, extravasated red blood cells. This is very consistent with um, at least a time point of leukocytoclastic vasculitis. It could be ramping up. It could be uh, fading away. It could be at its peak. Um, but the fact that we see a lot of extravasator of blood cells suggests that it's probably already damaged the vessels. You have areas that show a pinkish fibrinoid necrosis change in much of the lumen. It's hard to find the lumen in many of the vessels. So if you're having a hard time finding open lumen, then you're probably dealing with some fibrinoid necrosis even still. Now, uh, some people do not have a strict definition. They can still suspect a, an evolving leukocytoclastic vasculitis if they've got perivascular neutrophilic inflammation with abundant leukocytoclasis and some extravasated erythrocytes, maybe before they actually see the fibrinoid necrosis. But on a testing situation, they should show you all, all of the features of perivascular neutrophilic inflammation. Um, with leukocytoclasis or those small fragmented uh, nuclear debris, nuclear dust, um, and fibrinoid necrosis with extravasated red blood cells. So that all fits really well for leukocytoclastic vasculitis or small vessel vasculitis or leukocytoclastic vasculitis pattern. Um, to show you a more extensive example here, this LCV um, inflammatory pattern affects the superficial and the mid and in some even deeper vessels, which may be larger caliber. And the leukocytoclastic vasculitis in the superficial part of the biopsy is what you're going to see as a more classic leukocytoclastic vasculitis. But when you have a pattern of leukocytoclastic vasculitis with a deeper inflammation that might even be affecting larger vessel caliber vessels, you can think about some type of um, small and medium vessel vasculitis. So you could be thinking about a granulomatosis with polyangitis and eosinophilia here because you have a lot of eosinophils. Um, you could think about a really robust drug-induced vasculitis because sometimes you get a mixed picture of um, small vessel and larger vessel. Um, vasculitis, but this is definitely a neutrophilic process with abundant eosinophils and definitely destruction of the, the walls of the vessels with um, abundant eosinophils here in this case. Um, some areas of necrosis down here too. So keep in mind that granulomatosis with polyangitis, you don't often see a classic granuloma, granuloma formation around the vessels. It's hard to get that on the skin biopsies. What you'll often see is um, small vessel vasculitis that looks like leukocytoclastic vasculitis. And if you have a lot of eosinophils, you could think about a drug-induced leukocytoclastic vasculitis. You could think about granulomatosis with polyangitis and eosinophilia, and that's also known as Schurg-Strauss. So those are a couple of entities that you should keep in mind if you see a picture like this. And last but not least, just another example of leukocytoclastic vasculitis. So again, just to hammer home the details, um, this, the key concepts are going to be extravasated red blood cells, small fragmented uh, neutrophilic nuclei or leukocytoclasis, uh, obscuring of the lumen with a hazy eosinophilic material, that's the fibrinoid necrosis. And um, if you have all those features, it's safe to call it uh, consistent with leukocytoclastic vasculitis if you don't have any other clinical. If they are looking for vasculitis, then it's definitely leukocytoclastic vasculitis.